That's the mayor's daughter. I was told to look after her. But I failed miserably. Just look at her. She was a true beauty. Her skin nothing short of perfection. But... Catherine Warren is one of the most difficult characters to get a grasp on during the events of the game Resident Evil 2. For starters, when we meet her in the game as Sherry Birkin, she's already dead. So a true recountment of how she befell the fate which she did is very difficult to come by. Then you add on top of that the several games surrounding the Raccoon City incident which resulted in her death, and the true tale of her demise becomes much more difficult to decipher. However, when you look at everything to try and piece together her puzzle, it tells the story of a young woman who nearly suffered one of the most disturbing fates in all of Raccoon. Isn't she beautiful? I was about to stuff her. <laughs> Chief Irons? You know him? The story of Catherine Warren as we know it begins with her father, Michael Warren, who was the mayor of Raccoon City during that fateful time in 1998. An electrical engineer by trade, Warren was one of the most prominent men in Raccoon for decades before he would ever inhabit the mayoral office. In the early 1960s, it would be Warren who would establish electricity in the then small town. And in 1968, he would be integral to the creation of the city's cable car system. These massive triumphs for Raccoon would eventually lead Warren to a landslide victory when he ran for public office in 1987. And during his reign over the city, Raccoon would enter an age of extraordinary growth due almost exclusively to becoming the home of pharmaceutical giant, the Umbrella Corporation. However, while on the surface, Warren was seen as ushering in the golden age of this booming metropolis, behind the scenes, his relationship with Umbrella was far more sinister. The pharmaceutical giant had been bribing the politician with money and lavish parties for years. Warren agreeing to overlook any potentially illegal bioweapons research in exchange for Umbrella's continued support. This relationship and lack of accountability for Umbrella's highly dangerous research leading to the total collapse of the city he'd sold to the highest bidder. Brad! Here they come! While Michael Warren's corruption may be a matter of public record, unfortunately next to nothing is known about his daughter before the viral outbreak in Raccoon. Presumably she lived the typical life of a mayor's child, but how her father's illicit activities affected her, or if she even knew about them, is something that we will probably never know for certain. It has been suggested that she was affiliated with the investigative journalist Ben Bertolucci, but as for what that relationship was, or if it's even true, has yet to be seen. What we do know, however, is that once Mayor Warren found out that Umbrella had an outbreak that they couldn't contain, he was the first person to escape the soon-to-be-destroyed city, leaving his daughter behind. Catherine being taken into protective custody by another corrupt pillar of Raccoon City, Police Chief Brian Irons. Irons, like Catherine's father, had been bought and paid for by the Umbrella Corporation to use his position of power to quell any suspicion of foul play from the company. However, while Michael Warren escaped the city before the zombie outbreak, Irons did not. And as the city he'd sworn to protect crumbled around him, Irons began to lose his mind in the chaos, his once violent tendencies turning to brutal homicide as the city burned around him, and Catherine would find herself in his crosshairs. You little bitch! You're gonna pay for this! 
Ah, you little shit! While the details of Catherine's harrowing dealings with Irons aren't something we're privy to, we do know the general picture of what happened while she was in his custody. As Irons became more and more depraved, he would become fixated on the idea of killing the mayor's beautiful daughter and turning her into something of a human trophy. Irons himself was an avid taxidermy enthusiast, and wanted to see if his skills of stuffing deceased animals would translate into stuffing a deceased human. However, before he could enjoy the process of creating his macabre trophy, he first wanted to enjoy the thrill of the hunt. He would allow Catherine to slip away from his custody flee into a city of absolute madness while he prepared for the chase. Catherine would manage to avoid her captor for some time, but her life had not prepared her for such a nightmare, and Irons would eventually manage to capture the young girl, killing her and dragging her back to a safe place to carry out his sadistic hobby. Catherine Warren's life is an enigma, her fate being entirely decided by the corrupt men that Umbrella had bred. Her father had abandoned her to the bloodied hands of a madman, and that madman had toyed with her while she dreamed of a way to escape her inevitable demise. Catherine's is a story of a victim who wasn't saved, a young woman who paid the ultimate price for the sins of her selfish father.